The second segment of the nightly news is brought to you by Labri Credit Union. Labri Credit Union. We are not a bank. We are better. Welcome back. Thank you for staying with us. Following another fatal vehicle accident over the weekend, Corporal of Police attached to the Traffic Department, Jonathan Sejis, is urging St. Lucians to adhere to the laws of the road to mitigate life-threatening accidents. He goes on to make a special appeal to motorcyclists to wear their protective gear at all times. The recurring theme of road fatalities struck once again this weekend where a young man lost his life following a vehicular collision. Vehicular crashes and collisions are a reality that come along with driving, however it is hoped that lives are not lost in the process. Corporal of Police attached to the Traffic Department, Jonathan Sejis, is encouraging motorists to follow road safety and traffic laws as this is the greatest way of preventing road fatalities. We are asking persons to observe those laws, rules and regulations governing this traffic. Do not drink and drive, do not drink and ride, do not overtake unnecessarily or where it is not safe to do so. If you take the unnecessary chances, you will suffer the consequences. If you do not practice what is right, you may very well lose your life. St. Jesus is making a special plea to motorcyclists to ensure that protective gear is worn and is urging them to be more careful on the road. We encourage especially the riders to wear the safety gear, wear the helmets when riding, observe the regulations and the rules governing the traffic in terms of riding. A lot of riders and just last night we had a typical example of a rider overtaking injudiciously and lost his life. All of these things can be avoided by taking our time on the roads and doing what is right to prevent these kind of calamities. Sejis urges motorists to not only drive for themselves, but drive for others as well. He says that people should remain cognizant at all times when driving to mitigate vehicular accidents. Reporting for the Hot 7 Nightly News, I am Karim Nelson. In news coming to hand, the Ministry of Health and Wellness has reported 109 new cases of COVID-19. This brings the total number of active cases to 809. In other news, a former member of the National Green Party is speaking out about her decision to sever ties with the party. Dr. Gilbertha Mary St. Rose, who contested the most recent general election for the Shurzel Saltiba seat, says that there were certain aspects of the National Green Party that she, along with other members, did not agree with in its totality. Despite that decision, she has committed to continue working in the best interests of St. Lucians through other avenues. In 2021, the members of two parties in St. Lucia joined forces with independent candidates to form the National Green Party, a party which it said would serve as an alternative to the status quo of what it called self-serving politicians. The Green Party stems from the International Green Party movement, which has green policy at its core, prioritizing environmental responsibility. But part of the party's platform is its social justice aspect, which has been a source of contention for some of its members. It is for this reason that those members, including Dr. Gilbertha St. Rose, have severed ties with the party. St. Rose elaborated on which aspects were of particular concern to members. At the time of joining the Green Party, um, a few of us loved the concept of green and all it connotated. But now that we have looked at it more closely, and in fact, our leader, our then leader, Mr. Andre Dikeris Pancho have really insisted that we abide by all that the Green Party connotates. And at the time of joining the Green Party, we knew of the social justice aspect of it, which is the area that now it looks like we are being asked to abide by in its totality. So we knew of the leaning of the Green Party, but of course we had hoped that we would tailor it for our solution context. And I speak of three main areas. 
The Green Party's stand on pro-abortion, also the legalization of prostitution, and also gay rights and the gay marriages. So in all fairness to our own conscience and all that we want to embrace and impart to our people to encourage for good social justice, yes, we allow free choice. We have no choice. This is a person's choice, but of course, it's a personal decision. But for myself and a few of us, we have totally dissociated ourselves from the National Green Party because the leader is insisting that we abide by these principles, which is against our own consciences and our beliefs. Following her defeat in the July 26 general election, Dr. St. Rose did say that she would continue to serve the people in whatever capacity that she could. Now, she has chosen to do so through the newly formed Ionola Emancipation Movement. Now we have involved ourselves totally in the Ionola Emancipation Movement. And in that movement, which is an advocacy group and a group that will be an oversight for the government, the Labour Party government, which we fully support, we will want to be an oversight so that we get what we need and want from our, our government. So a group of us, and we invite persons to join that will assist us in advocating and demanding and overseeing what is being done for our St. Lucia and our nation so that we can progress together, together in truth and love and freedom. Free choice in what we decide to do as long as it's within the law of God. Also severing ties with the party are Ubadullah Mohammed and a few key executive administrative members. For the Hot 7 News, Nisha Charles reporting. The Minister responsible for housing, Richard Frederick, is calling for an overhaul of the National Housing Corporation. According to him, the organization lacks proper managerial guidance and the staff lack the skill set. He is hoping to get the NHC on proper footing. When I admit office, when I leave ministerial office, NHC will have its own office. No longer will they be renting premises as they are doing now. So I'm putting myself in a position to ensure that this thing happens with their own resources, not necessarily having to go to a bank for financing. That was a pronouncement made recently by the minister responsible for housing, Richard Frederick, as he visited various development sites last week. Frederick, who has served as housing minister before, says it is time that the organization gets its footing and be in a position to sustain itself. He says the current state of the institution is a far cry from what it should be. When you tell me that NEC has a tremendous, a heavy land bank, but NEC is renting, was renting up to recently an office for $9,000 a month. Housing bills, houses, sells lots, but yet renting an office over 9,000. It has been reduced now because the staff um, was replaced or, or was placed elsewhere. But those things have to be looked at. NEC does not have a truck. Can you imagine? NEC does not have a truck. I bought a truck when I was minister. I understood it was sold. NEC has two old vehicles. All of those things have to be looked at. I believe the entire institution needs to be revamped. Um, they need to be placed in a position where the cash flow is better. Over the years, the National Housing Corporation has been struggling to stay afloat. The housing minister believes that the NHC has enough assets to not be dependent on government. I just want to look at um, um, NHC's position holistically and to give them the proper guidance to move forward in a manner that would at least bestow upon them flexibility, proper cash flow, and of course having the comfort of uh, their own vehicles, their own truck, and whatever is necessary to make them execute the mandate of, of, of NHC in a more effective and proficient manner. The minister, along with the managing director of the NHC, Sidonia Charles, surveyed a number of sites on Friday, including the Shock and Talvon Babano housing developments. Upon assuming office, Frederick has halted works on the Shock housing development site. I was given directive yesterday by the Minister of Housing to stop all 
ongoing works at the shop development estate. Um, this, this directive was then communicated to Fresh Start Construction Limited and the intention of the government is to review the contract and review the arrangement and have this um, amicably resolved at the soonest. Friday's exercise ended with a visit to the Bois housing development. For the Hot 7 News, Nisha Charles reporting. Delta changes everything. Those were the words echoed by the Minister for Health, Moses Jamatis, prior to a cabinet sitting on Monday. The steady and continuous rise in COVID cases has caused many to speculate on whether the COVID-19 protocols may be adjusted. Shabati says that based on the information he receives from medical officials, that determination will be made. Over the weekend, 172 COVID cases were recorded, bringing the total number of active cases to 723. With the introduction of the Delta variant and the steady rise of COVID cases, medical officials are saying that St. Lucia is at a critical juncture. Speculation has already begun amongst members of the public concerning the potential amendment of the national COVID-19 protocols. Minister for Health Moses Jabati says that the Delta variant undoubtedly changes the game and also says that after consultation with the medical official, if needs be, we'll see an adjustment to the protocols. I'm just coming out of a meeting with our team at the Ministry of Health, Wellness and Elderly Affairs and we are looking at the situation. The Delta variant, um, I'm advised, um, changes everything. It is, it is more transmissible and it, it impacts more people at a faster rate. And I'm advised that it also impacts younger people, people at a you know, younger age. So definitely we have to look at the situation. We're just going into, into cabinet and we will discuss the situation and clearly if the health professionals believe that there is a need for us to adjust the protocols, we will. Jabatis further emphasizes that proper education on the vaccine is of paramount importance to aid with citizens feeling more comfortable about taking the vaccine. He says that the Ministry of Health will engage stakeholders to ensure that people become more educated on the matter so that vaccination levels can increase and St. Lucians can be better protected. More importantly, that people get, get educated. Those who are hesitant, um, to take the vaccine, we need to ensure that the, educa the education reaches them. And there are people who want to take the vaccine, but they're just hesitant. Um, many people tell you they don't know enough about the vaccine, and therefore we have to find ways to educate people about the vaccine. We have to get more medical professionals involved, more scientists involved, so that um, our people find reasons to take the vaccine. But it's very clear, based on my advice and based on what we are seeing, that um, people who are vaccinated are less likely to, to get seriously ill. Jabatis is calling all St. Lucians to join the fight against COVID, get vaccinated and adhere to the protocols. St. Lucians now await patiently to see whether or not protocols will be changed. Reporting for the Hot 7 Nightly News, I am Karim Nelson. Minister for Tourism, Investment, Creative Industries, Culture and Information, Dr. Ernest Tillet, on Friday the 13th of August, met with the Chief Executive Officer and Managers of Invest St. Lucia as he continues to familiarize himself with personnel at the various departments within his ministry. The discussion centered not only on the operations of the agency, but importantly, the role of the agency in growing the economy. Homer DeMarc reports. Minister for Tourism, Investment, Creative Industries, Culture and Information, Honorable Dr. Ernest Tele, and a Parliamentary Secretary, Honorable Gibeon Ferdinand, along with Permanent Secretary in the Ministry, Donna Lynn Viti, have been meeting with entities under the investment portfolio to chart the way forward for St. Lucia. Friday, 13th August 2021, the team met with Invest St. Lucia to familiarize themselves with the work and processes of the agency. It is really to get an update on the work program of the various agencies, to get a, an understanding of what they've been doing, to also get an understanding of how they see their work program evolving over the next five years. With a new government um, in place, there is a new mandate, there are new visions, there's a new vision, there are ideas that we would want to ensure that the agencies understand our priorities for us and to have that interaction so they understand where we want to head. Some of the agencies have been very proactive in reading the manifesto and already starting to suggest how they can incorporate 
the, the promises made in the manifesto within their work program. So I think for us it has been a very productive week. Parliamentary Secretary in the Ministry of Tourism, Investment, Creative Industries, Culture and Information, Honorable Gibeon Ferdinand, indicated that some of the initiatives of investing in Lucia are in alignment with the government's vision for the country. We noticed that there is a boost program that is aligned with the idea of the youth economy that the Prime Minister had been very articulate about in our campaign. And um, we were able to get a sense of what is happening in the in Investment Russia with other major developments such as the um, land rationalization in the north and south. Um, and I think that gives us an idea of what programs Investment Russia has that can help us achieve the objectives that our government has set. Chief Executive Officer of Invest St. Lucia, Roger Cherry, says Invest St. Lucia and the government of St. Lucia have a similar objective, to put St. Lucia and St. Lucians first. One initiative being undertaken by the agency that speaks to this vision is land rationalization. Part of our strategic initiatives has been to give St. Lucian ownership of St. Lucia. And, and one of the main initiatives that we've done towards that is um, uh, for, to facilitate land ownership by two strategic initiatives. One is land development, land that Invest St. Lucia owns have been developed and sold um, primarily, if not 100%, to St. Lucians. The other aspect of that is land development as well, but what we call land rationalization. In that case, the individual St. Lucians who have lived on lands owned by the state or by Invest St. Lucia for a number of years, and the aim really is to provide um, uh, the, the, the basic infrastructure at least, and in some cases very extensive interest infrastructure, and sell those lands at reasonable rates, um, uh, way below market rates to, to St. Lucians. The minister and his team will continue to meet with key agencies under his portfolio as he charts the way forward. From the Government Information Service, Huma Dimak reporting. Stay with us, there's more news after the break. The second segment of the nightly news was brought to you by Labri Credit Union. Labri Credit Union. We are not a bank. We are better.